Well, hello, hello everyone. Welcome back to the channel. Miss Crochet and Coffee here, and today we're doing a little something different. Today we're going to talk about diamond painting accessories. Yes! Now keep in mind, just to keep this video from being like four hours long, because there are tons of accessories and different variations of such, um, I'm going to go over just a couple of basic accessories. And then if there's anything that you would like to see that I didn't show in this video, you can write that down in the comment section below. And I promise to get to it next time I do another video like this and I get a couple of things together that we can do a video on. So let's get started. First things first, when you enter into diamond painting, you start off with a very basic toolkit that looks kind of like this. This is what a basic toolkit looks like. Now, this is just an extra pen. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So, this is a basic toolkit. Usually, you get a pink pen. Sometimes, there will or will not be a squishy in your package. Um, your pen will either be pink or blue. I haven't seen them in any other colors, I don't think. Um, green boat. So, if you ever are on my channel and you hear me say, Pumpkin Spice Toolkit. This is what I consider a pumpkin spice toolkit. It just means a basic of all basic toolkits. It gives you the bare necessities for what you need to diamond paint. And sometimes it will come out of the bag like it's going to shank you. So, pink pen, plate of wax, a green boat with no funnel, and some baggies. So let's pull this all out here so you can take a look at it so you know what it looks like. So this is what it looks like. This is what it looks like. This is your basic toolkit that you get, Okay. Um, now it may or may not be missing baggies, it may or may not be missing a squishy or multi-placers, but you can buy those types of things extra. Like here. Straighteners can come from a variety of different places over on Etsy. I believe Enablers Outpost sells them, if not, um, Shine Like a Diamond over on Etsy sells them. And don't worry, I'm going to list some of my favorite Etsy shops down in the description box of this video to show you guys where I get all of my cool accessories and what have you from. So when I say a shop, just look down in the description box and there's a little drop down arrow right here underneath the video. It's a little gray arrow and if you click on it, it says open here. You click on it and it'll bring down a whole drop list full of Etsy shops that I like to use whenever I'm getting my diamond painting accessories. Now does that mean that these are the only Etsy shops out there? Of course not. These are the ones I know and use on a regular basis. So, uh, let's see. So you have Enablers Outpost, I think, sells multi-placers. If not, um, I'm not 100% sure on that one, actually. But I know Shine Like a Diamond did, but I'm not sure if her shop's open right now because she's kind of recovering from some stuff. But Shine Like a Diamond did. Rachel Ray was selling them for a while. But there are other places that you can get multi-placing tips. Lexi Lily Crafts, she actually has something cool called Curved Placers. And her placers will come like this. They are 3D printed. Lexi Lily Crafts is the innovator of the curved multi-placer, which I do have a video on how to use both a straight and a curved multi-placer, and I'll put that up in the eye there so that you can go check that out whenever you're done with this video. But this is the curved multi-placers, and she does sell them in a variety of sizes, and she does sell them in packs as well, so you can get a whole set of uh, curved multi-placers from Lexi Lily Crafts. Those are some of my favorite, absolute favorite multi-placers to use. Because you just rock it out. You literally just rock it out. And then you have, of course, your straight placers. Now, when it comes to multi-placers like these, there are a multitude of different types. So you have your flat placers like this. And then, I don't think I have any close near me. But they have also uh, the fatter multi-placers. So you'll get like a 3, 6, or a 9 placer. And they're a little bit fatter than these are. The thin placers like this will also... Let's take them out of the bag here. I thought I had multi-placers near me, but apparently I don't have the fat ones near me. They have a number on it. That number on that multi-placer tells you how many drills that placer will pick up. So this one will pick up 11 drills, right? Right. So, the thin placers will tell you what they pick up. The fat ones will not. Uh, actually, if you give me a second, let me see if I can find something. Hold on. Alright, I was able to find one. So this is a three placer. This is a standard placer that you would get in most kits. It looks like this. And the reason why we call them the fat placers is because there is a significant difference between those and the opaque ones. Now the opaque ones are a little bit weaker, meaning if you use a lot of pressure, you can and will break them. I break them on a weekly basis. But 
this is how you can tell the thin from the the fat one so you can see i don't know if i can get you to see that hold on you can see the how thick the three placer is considering to the 11th placer so yeah those are multi-placers, which again, I have done videos on multi-placers, which I will put up there in the eye to show you how to use a multi-placer if that's something that you might be interested in. So there's that. You also have baggies. Baggies come in different sizes and forms. Uh, these, this is a bigger baggie because it's holding uh, multi-placers in it. I just got a big thing of baggies from Star Ore that have the lines on them. Um, any video that I mention, I will either put down in the description box or will pop up there in the eye if I can. So, yeah, so you got baggies. And then let's talk about trays. Trays come in all different shapes and sizes. So you have your green boat. You have a clear boat, which this one came from Star Ore. I just did the unboxing for that. Then you have resin boats, which this was uh, Susan D. asked me on my channel about the, can somebody do resin boats. And a young lady named Sharon over at Sh Design, was it Shiny? Shazza, Shiny Shazza, I believe, over on Instagram, was the one that made this one for me. And then you have, if you ever hear anybody talk about the big boats, this is the big boat. As you can see, it's a big boat. And then you have 3D printed trays, which come in also many different shapes and sizes. These are from Money Made over on Etsy. And no, that's not how you say it correctly, but that's how I'm saying it for right now. So we're just going to have to deal with it. So Money Made made these for me. And then let's see, because I have other stuffs over here. Oh, here it is. So here's my big bag of multi-placers. So we can show you here. I dumped that out. So we have the thicker nine placer and a three placer. I don't see a six placer. Six placer is usually clear, but you can see how thick those are. So those are some more multi-placers. Your wax can also come in different shapes and sizes. So sometimes you'll get the square wax. Sometimes you'll get the heart wax. The heart wax, usually, if you really are seeking it out, Diamond Art Club is one of the companies that uses the heart-shaped wax. So there's that. So boats are pretty much self-explanatory. But one of the things I get asked about the most about boats is how do you straighten your drills in the boat? So I'm going to take and straighten my drills in the boat. So I'm going to get some drills. Let me get those because there's not a lot in there. Now there's not really a special trick to this. Because when you're diamond painting, you want your drills to sit up straight so that when you go to get them out of the tray, all you have to do is shake, shake, shake. And all, all I do is shake it lightly back and forth. And then I tilt it a little bit, about 45 degrees. You just tilt it a little bit and you shake down. And then I pat it real lightly on the bottom. Boom, they line up. And can you do that with any tray? Of course you can. So we're gonna dump these from this tray. Now for the trays that don't have spouts like this one here, this one would be great if it had a spout on it. But for those that don't have spouts, they do make funnels, which unfortunately I can't show you right now because my eight-year-old stole it. So they do make funnels that you can use to funnel your drills into. So let's see. How do we shake it? So what I do is I always take this end here with the spout on it, and I put it in my hand like this. That way when you're shaking it, if drills decide to take and go this way, they're not like jumping out of your tray. So I take it like this, put that on my palm, put my hand around it, shake, 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 pat it a little bit. And you don't got to shake real hard. Shake lightly, and then you, t you turn it up just a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. It's literally not up a whole lot. It's facing me. Like, I'm putting it like it's facing me. So it's not straight up and down. It's just angled as if I'm looking at my cell phone. So I angle it like that, and then I pat the bottom and tilt it down. Boom. Your, your drills are all lined up. And you can do that in any, any boat. It doesn't matter what boat it is. Even the little green boat... I don't typically use these. Use, these usually get donated to uh, elementary schools because I don't use the green boat. I know there are some people out there that like the green boat. I ain't hating on you, but me personally, I can't use it. There's not enough drills in it for me. So shake, shake, shake. Tilt down. 
and this is a smaller boat, so you're not going to be able to line up as many as you want because it is a small boat, and you also don't want to overfill it like it is now. But if, as long as you don't overfill it, boom, straighten your drills up. All right, so we're going to put those back in there. And that's going to bring me, and this is going to be all over the place. This isn't in any particular order. This is just all over the place. Oh, no, I spilled drills. Okay, next thing. Diamond painting accessory. I was actually asked to do a video on this, so this is the perfect video to do it for. So say you spill your drills. Oh my god, how do you get them up? One, there are a couple of tricks. If you have carpet like I do, you could take a spoon, tilt it, and scrape your carpet. It will cause the drills to jump into the spoon so that you can pick them up. That's a trick I learned from a young lady that used to be here on YouTube. I don't think she's on YouTube anymore. But, the other thing you can do is buy one of these. Now, Miss Coffee, what the heck is that? This is a diamond painting vacuum. My thing is, do these things actually work, like, seriously? Do they work? We're going to test it out. Okay. So it has these little brushes on it because, of course, if you put it on carpet, you're going to want to, like, you know, maneuver it around. And I have dog hair on my carpet, so we're not, we're not doing that. There's no amount of vacuuming that's going to get all that dog hair up, and I really don't want to have to deal with dog hair in my drills right now, so we're just going to do it on the table, okay? We're going to do it on the table. So what do we do? Now this particular vacuum has a power button. I don't know about the rest of them. I know there are different shapes and sizes of these little vacuums. You can get like ladybugs and all kinds of fun stuff. I personally don't use vacuums, but I was asked to buy one so that I can test it out to see how it worked. This is just a regular jank vacuum that I bought off Amazon for a few bucks, so I will link it down in the description box, of course, below. Do keep in mind that I am an Amazon influencer, so anything I link from Amazon, I will make a small commission if you use the link, so I thank you in advance if you choose to use it. But with that said, did it pick up all the, back, the drills? It sure did. Now let's see how it is, easy it is to get the drills out of here, okay? It took me 10 minutes to figure out how to get this thing off. Okay, so we're going to... We're going to twist it and do like that. There are our drills. And then we're just going to try to get them out of there. They seem a little staticky in there. And this particular vacuum says not to use for more than 10 minutes because you will like probably shock yourself or something. So yeah, um, there's drills caught all, all up, up in there. And then this piece here comes out. Real simple and easy, right? There's drills on the fan. We're going to get those off. Yeah, now they're, now they're all staticky. <laughs> but that's okay. If your drills are static, like if they're static on your drills, little piece of dryer sheet usually will do the trick. So you just cut off a little edge of your dryer sheet, throw it in your drill container, and boom, it'll get rid of your static. Get out of there. All right. So I think there's a little out, out. And it, this has little things on the side that tell you where exactly to put this. Um, you want to line up the little pegs. Put that back in there just like that. Snaps in real nice. Now to get the rest of the static drills out of there. Give, give me my drills. And it did have like a little brush thing to it. And I was wondering what it was for. Now I know. Alright, so give me a second to ride the struggle bus to get the drills off of here, and I'll be right back. Alright, there we go. So now it's all nice and empty. Just twist that back on. Boom. And there's some stuck to the bottom here still. Okay, there we go. I think we got them all. So, drills back in your tray. And then we're just going to pour them back in here because now they're covered in static. Like really bad, as you can see. And again, what you would do is you would just get a dryer sheet and knock that static out of there. I'm going to have to ride the struggle bus again to go put this in here. Because at this point, it's just it just caused a lot of static. Now, do all of them do that? No. I'm thinking it's just because the vacuum is new and it's never been used. It's literally just been sitting here for like the last two weeks. So, uh... It could just be because it hasn't been used yet, but I'm sure over time, after you use the vacuum, it will eliminate some of the static to it. 
So yeah, hold on a second. All right, now we got all of our drills back in there. Dryer sheet, my keychain of doom. I'm just gonna cut off a corner of the dryer sheet here. You don't need a big piece. We're just gonna cut off a little chunk here. Literally, that's all you need. We're gonna throw it in there like a grenade, close it, and then I'm gonna shake it. I want those drills to get all around that dryer sheet. Now, does this work? Yes. Does it work for everybody? Not. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. I'm not sure why it wouldn't work. So see, got your dryer sheet there. I'm just gonna lay that at the bottom of that container. And then we're gonna try to pour them back in and see if this is easier this time. No drills on my hand. All drills except for one went into the container. So using a dryer sheet will eliminate static off your drills. Fresh dryer sheet. Now you can't go get a used dryer sheet. It has to be one that has not been used. So I would keep one next to you in like a, a little container or a box or something um, just so just in case you need it. So there's that. Oh, this is something else I wanted to show because I do get questions about this a lot. This is the Silhouette Pick Me Up pen. Does it work? Yes. Do I use it? No. Why? Um, you can, let's see here. It's been a long time since I've used this. What you do is essentially you squeeze this and that little goopy stuff that's in there comes out. See how it pushes out that little goopy stuff? Now, the reason I don't use the, the pick-me-up pen is because that stuff, when it hits your canvas, if you accidentally touch your canvas with it, it gets stuck to your canvas, and it's kind of a pain in the tuchus to get off. Now, I've seen people replace it with pink pink wax and use it, uh, like Criella Picks. She was someone that used to love the pick-me-up pen. It's, it's just not my jam. Everybody has their own way of diamond painting, and just because yours differs from mine or anybody else's doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means it's your way. So... Pick me up pen is another thing that you can get if it's something you're interested in. It's a refillable, essentially it's a refillable pen. You just stuff, it has already, it already has like blue tack or something in it. And you just twist that top and it comes out whenever you need it. So there's that. The next thing we're going to talk about is tweezers. Tweezers are a staple in diamond painting. Now there's two different types of, or there's a couple of different types of cheap tweezers. You got your cheapo tweezers, which let me see if I can find some in my thing here. Yeah, I, I have a pack of them in here. You have your cheapo tweezers, which look like this, where you look like if you, they, they're cheap. And you can tell they're cheap because you can look at them sideways and bend them. Tweezers shouldn't be that easily flexible. So these are the cheapo tweezers. You have your pointy tweezers, which will come with a sheath, which is this is the sheath that you put on it to keep it from stabbing yourself. And then you have rounded tweezers, which I don't know if I have any around me yes i do then you have rounded tweezers now to get the pink rounded tweezers you visit treasure studios arts she's the one that carries the pink tweezers there might be other companies out there that carry different color tweezers um i know you can get like rainbow tweezers from tma who is uh, dp with sparklers you can get tweezers of any kind shape size whatever but these are rounded versus pointed so here's the difference the rounded tweezers are good for squares and rounds, and so are the pointed ones. But just be careful with the pointed ones. One, not to stab yourself. And two, not to scratch up your drills, which is why a lot of people like or prefer the rounded tweezers over the pointed tweezers. So we have tweezers. And then we have these. These are up oh, here. Are, here's some spoons that you can use. People use spoons when they have little containers like this to scoop their drills out of the containers. Like they would scoop it out of the container, put it in their drill tray like that. Um, I'm trying to find... Oh, here's another set of tweezers. They're like plastic ones. They don't work very well. Um, Alright, we're going to put that back in there like that. Oh, maybe it was in this box. So we have tweezers. And then, of course, there's different little storage containers that come with some of these basic, uh, like, the, if you get, like, this little pink box, um, you can get, like, some of these basic little tiny 
uh, storage solutions, but I wouldn't recommend these. I do have a video up on storage. It needs to be updated, but for the most part, storage has not changed. There hasn't been any new revelations in storage. Um, the storage that I prefer are called Harbor Freights, which look like this. It's a 25-piece set, so you have 24 little boxes on the inside, and then the bigger box on the outside is 25. So it's 25 pieces, and it look like this, and you can put your little stickers on it, all that fun jazz. So that is that. Next thing is this. You're probably like, what is that? I'm going to show you what that is. Let's clear this table. All right. So, what are these? These are called cover minders. Another one of the big questions I get when I get asked about diamond paintings is, what are those little things that they you see on my diamond painting? They're these. Now, if you're a advanced diamond painter, then this, you know, obviously is just a refresher course for you, apparently. Um, these are called cover minders. What is a cover minder? A cover minder is a magnet. And if you look on the back of this one, there are tons of people that sell these. Um, this is a Kim's needle minder. We have tiny puffer fish. We have enablers outpost. We have shine like a diamond. And we have Rachel Ray crafts. And I will link all of them down below. Um, and what it is, is if you look on the back, there's a magnet. You just slide the magnet off, just like that. <laughs> They're strong magnets. So this, it's a magnet, okay? And what you do with it, let me show you. I'm going to get these and put these away here. I'm going to pull out my whip. Whip stands for work in progress. This is my whip. It's a big whip, so you, you will, it, I can't get it all on camera. You'll see I already have some cover minders on here. And so what this does is, is it holds your cover page back. So say I want to work on this section here, okay? But I don't want this paper all in my way. So like if I were to remove this gigantic patty pie, if I were to remove that off there, okay, and I want to pull this back, what's going to keep this from slapping and falling over? The cover minder. So this is how you use it. You take it, and most cover minders are decorative. So you'll get cover, I have literally have cover minders of every shape and size, okay? I, I literally have at least 500 cover minders. They're, they're kind of addictive to collect. Collecting craft supplies and accessories is, an, is a whole other craft, okay? So here is the cover minder. Here is the magnet from the back of the cover minder. What you do is you put the decorative side up on top of your, your cover sheet, and then this piece goes underneath your canvas. So you literally go up underneath your canvas to make it stick, okay? So now it's not coming off. So now you can diamond paint the section that you're on without having to worry about your cover page falling down because it has that cover minder to keep it up. Or if you've done with a session, like say you have to get up and cook or go do some adulting and you want to, and you're not finished with the section and you want to protect it because say you have animals because a lot of you know us have animals. I have two dogs myself. What you can do is you would place this back down over the section that isn't completed to protect it from fur or dust and debris and then you would do the same thing. You would take the cover minder, magnet side goes underneath, decorative side goes on top, boom. It holds that section down so that you can uh, protect it from getting any dirt, debris, or having any accidents to it. I can't tell you how many times I've spilled drinks on my cover of my diamond painting. So, like, it, believe me, they're helpful. So, those are what cover minders are. And like I said, you can get them in many different shapes, sizes, variations, what have you. Um... And there are a lot of sellers of these little minder things. So you can take a look at the list of people I have that I like to use down below. So one of the other things I was asked about, this thing. What is this? This is called a diamond painting ruler. There are a lot of creators you will see using these. And some of us don't like using it. Me personally, I don't like the, the ruler. To me, it seems to take more time than it's worth. These rulers do come in different shapes and sizes. They do have them for square and round. And the round ones do have different sizes. So if you say, uh, 
like Diamond Art Club's rounds are like everybody's rounds, I believe, are the same. I think, except for TSA. I think. And essentially, all you would do, let's get you down into the business here so you can see what I'm doing. All you would do is you would take it, line it up with the, the drills on your canvas. So we're going to go about right here. And you can line it up like this on your canvas. You just want to make sure it's all lined up where all the symbols are showing. We're going to do it this way so it's easier to come off. So this rigid part at the bottom here is going to go up against the drills, okay? Because that's going to help you line it up. You're going to put those up against the drills. Because if you have OCD and want those drills to be super straight, you're going to want to use a ruler. Um, to me, it's kind of tedious, so I don't use the ruler. I just like being able to place and go. So you would line it up. And this one isn't going to line up because the, the rounds on this kit, for some reason, don't line up with this ruler. There we go. Now it's lined up. Kind of press it down. See how it's all lined up? And then you would take your drills, put them in there, and then when you're done, you would lift it up and move it. To me, it's kind of tedious, but there are people out there that do like using the diamond painting ruler. So there is the diamond painting ruler. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you was specifically asked of me whenever I said I was going to do this video. It's this. Now, I'm not sure why anybody would want to use this thing. It seems like more of a pain in the butt than anything. But I was asked, so I, I will oblige. This is a roller. What's a roller? I'll show you. You can get them in three different sizes, apparently. This is the stick. And I've seen people take the pink pen and glue it to a nickel and use the nickel to do this. But they do actually have tools that you can do this with. This is what this is, okay? So this is a roller. This is something that you can use to roll your diamonds onto your kit. I'm going to do a small little tester thing here. So this is, and again, forgive like the ratchetness of this. I've had this for like forever and I, I just never used it because it just seemed like more of a waste of time. But I was asked, so I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. All right, so let's see if we can find the beginning of it. I found the end of it. Can we find the beginning? We're just going to take that piece out of the middle. We're just going to get rid of that. All right, so you find the end of it. There it is. Just like that. You don't want to touch on it too much. And then you just... Okay. Can you see what I'm doing? Let's just make sure you can see what I'm doing. So we're just going to place that on there like this. And you're going to go the whole way around. So you're going to place that on there. Oh, okay. All right, all right. Look, listen. You got you to focus. So we're going to place it on, and we're going to go the whole way around, okay? The whole way around. You will need scissors because you'll have to cut this off. I'm going to make sure it's on there nice and straight. Or as straight as possible. And you're just going to go the whole way around. Just like this. Till you get back to the beginning. Now when you get back to the beginning, you get out your keychain of doom. And you cut it. Like that. And you, you put that off to the side. And this is how the roller looks, okay? I'm just going to smooth it out, make sure everything's on there correctly. But then on top of there is a white piece of paper that you're going to have to peel off, okay? Now this is the finicky part, so I'm going to get my pointed tweezers here. I'm going to try to get that paper off. There it is. Boom. Look how easy that was. So we're going to pull that paper off, just like that. Now... Some people will use their hands. They don't like using the stick. They'll just use their hands to roll it on. But it does come with a stick. So I don't know if you can see it, but this, the tacky is on there. You take your stick. There's a little hole. You just stick it in the hole there. Boom. Just like that. I'm going to put it up like that so I don't get any, anything it on anything. And I'm going to show you how, I, how, how this is used. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go for this symbol here on the side. 
we're gonna turn this just a little bit just like this I'm gonna bring you over Sorry, I'm moving you around a lot all right so we're gonna go for letter let's go for V V for victory all right so we're gonna open this up we're gonna get the other container up and open it up because it has V in it you're gonna get your tray let's see where I can find my white tray We're gonna pour some drills in, okay? And you can also use that cover minder if you push it like this. It'll open it up a little bit more for you. And it just kind of keeps it in place. I would tell you to make sure that you put one on top of the cover minder as well. As you can see, I have one on top to keep it from like folding over or whatnot. So let's see here. We're gonna go right here, okay? We got our plague ink doctor. So we're first things first, we're going to shake those drills. So you're going to shake it back and forth while it's laying flat. And then you're going to slowly tilt it and tap the bottom of your tray. And then you're going to tilt it and tap it downward. That will get your drills to line up. And you'll see in there, there are two different types of drills in this tray. If you've never seen an AB drill, you see that drill right there? This is an AB drill. It's an iridescent coating that is put on the drill to make it sparkle just a little bit brighter. It will also reflect light from the drill next to it to make it spri sparkle brighter as well. So, because if one shots, we all shine, you heard? So, that is what an AB drill is. But these two are the exact same color. So, what I do, which if you haven't seen the videos on it, what I like to do is when I'm working on a kit and I want to add ABs to it, instead of completing the entire kit and then going back and uh, pulling up drills, I will mix ABs in with my normal drills. Now, where do I get my ABs from? Obviously, I get them from Tima over at DP with sparklers. If she doesn't have them, I will try going over to Diamond Drills USA and getting them because they also have just started selling them as well. So, there you have it. So, we have the tray of drills. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. So, then we have our stick, okay? Okay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start here. I'm going to start right here. Make sure I get all a big, nice, long trail of drills to use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this up. Okay, that won't push. So I'm going to take it and I'm just going to roll it. Okay. Just like that. Just roll it. That one didn't want to come on there all the way. And I'm just going to roll it here. Make sure they're all on there somewhat lined up. And then I'm going to start here and roll it. And because you have that, that sticky on there, this is what it does. Essentially, it just brings your drills onto the sticky. Now... What you want to then do is we're going to get down into the business a little bit. You're going to be a little bit in my personal space, but it's okay. We'll, we'll survive it. What I like to do is I like to put my finger on the back of it to steady it because my hands are a little shaky. You take that first. Okay, we're going to have to take you out of here because I need you to be down into the business. Okay, so hold on. All right, so I think we got you down. And I'm going to find where the drill stops. So you see this little bald spot right here? I'm gonna take that and that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm gonna start on this side here. I'm gonna place that first drill down on the canvas. Make sure it's straight and then you just roll it. You just roll. And then the drills come off. Boop. It's hard to show you and hold this. So if it's not straight, please forgive me. I will straighten them later. You just roll. And it will roll on that stick. Is it supposed to keep coming off the stick? No. It's just being annoying at this point. But let me show you now with it actually like in my, like we're, we're going to put you back up there so that you can see. So hold on. All right. 
because most people that do use these don't typically have a phone in their hand. So let's see here. We're going to get a couple more on here. Now this tape, you just keep using it until it's not tacky anymore. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put my finger on the back of it here. I'm going to start from right here. I'm going to start from right there. It looks like we got a little piece of debris on there. Let's see if we can scratch that off. All right. So we're going to start from there. We're going to find a beginning part. And then we're just going to roll. And you just roll like that. Now, am I a professional at using this thing? No, this is the first time I've actually ever used one of these because it's just, I don't know, I've never used one before. So we're going to find the beginning. It will take you some time and practice like anything else to get this where all your drills lay straight. But eventually you can get it. So that's what this is about. And then, like I said, a lot of people will actually use their hands with it. So we're going to use our hands with it. All right, so then what we're going to do, and when I say use our hands, we're going to use it just like this. So I'm just going to take it, grab, oh, try to grab a line of them. Grab some. We got some on the thing here. And then I'm going to find a spot, and I'm just going to roll it out. Using your hand definitely does give you more uh, control over the drills to make them straight. Apparently those two don't want to come off. So let's try that again. So I'm just going to repat that down. Grab a couple like that. Well, we're missing a spot. There we go. Find a line and boom. Put that drill right there there you have it so definitely i would suggest if you're going to use one of these use your hand don't use the stick the stick's kind of a pain in the butt uh using your hand will give you more control you just line it up boom just like that so that is how you use this little wheel cylinder turny thingy doodle um so yeah so that's there's that tool and then when it comes to your tweezers, say you put a drill in the wrong spot, boom. Some people use tweezers to diamond paint with. That does take a lot of practice. You can pick up more than one. And it will also help you make sure your drills are straight. Me personally, I prefer my drill pins. I'm going to see if I can get that ruler to work. Where did the ruler go? All right, so we got the ruler down. And as you can see, it's lined up with those rounds right there. I'm going to use my pen for this, okay? Hope you don't mind. Also, little tidbit trick that I learned from my 8-year-old. When you're working with ABs, a lot of the times, the coating on the ABs will steal the wax out of your pen. Yes, it's annoying. Yes, it happens to everyone. But my 8-year-old taught me a trick. What she does when she places AB drills is she takes and uses the multi-placer instead of the actual pen part, like the single placer. So I have like four drills on there. I'm not sure if these are even going to fit in there. We're just going to put them down anywhere. And then what you would do is you would press them down. Let's see if we can do like every other one. And you'll hear the satisfying little clicking noise when you do it. And that's how you know that they're in there. And then what you would do is you would press down just to make sure that they're down in there. And then when you're done with that section, you would lift it up. And boom, your drills are straight. But, of course, you would fill up the whole thing, and they do make these a lot bigger. So, if you're interested in the diamond painting ruler, they do make them bigger. They sell them on AliExpress. I believe they even sell them on Amazon now. Um, I will try to find and link a couple of them for you. And, like I said, they do make them for round and square. 
So there you have it, folks. I think that's enough tips and tricks for you. Uh, if you think of anything else you would like me to show you, please let me know. So in this video to recap, we learned what an AB drill was. We learned what a cover minder was. We learned how to use this cylinder thing. We learned about tweezers and different types of wax, which by the way, for wax, not all wax is made the same. There are many different types of wax and I'll do probably another video on that. But with that said, folks, I got to get out of here. We've learned a lot in this video, and I hope you did too. If you did, please feel free to hit a thumbs up. If there's something that I didn't show in this video that you would like to see, please leave that down in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to make a video for it just for you and for the other 21,000 people on the channel. So with that said, folks, thank you again so much for watching. If you're new to the channel and would like to see more random crazy videos just like this, please feel free to hit the subscribe button and the bell to be notified anytime I randomly decide to put up a video. And believe me... It's random. But with that said, I now must bid you adieu. But not before reminding you. Wash your hands, don't touch your face, keep your six feet, wear your mask, and always try to be kind, be courteous, be cool. Bye, guys. <laughs>